Monday, I'm with you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. Today, I am with none other than the gorgeous Vina Lamba from Dildiya Gala, which is a radio, TV, uh, multiple media presentation that she does every day for the South Asian community. And we are making Mother's Day brunch. So today, I'm going to showcase three recipes. One is going to be an egg shakshuka, which is very Middle Eastern inspired, but it's also very popularly eaten by... Uh, my family because my mother-in-law is from Sindh and I guess it, there was just some kind of inflow into India and they make that as well. I will also be making a very simple cucumber sandwich which everybody can make. I'm doing the gluten-free version but if you do gluten by all means. Good morning Bhav, welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. I'm also going to be doing zucchini fritters which is a very very common Middle Eastern brunch item and this is made with zucchini. So I have some prep that I've done ahead of time. But the best thing to do is to start the most time consuming thing first. So before we <clears throat> do anything else, we are going to start working on our shakshuka. I'm going to tilt this camera so y'all can see the pan. And if you have any problems seeing anything, then just let me know in the comments so I can adjust the camera angles and whatnot. Okay. So into a hot pan, first thing that goes in is olive oil. I'm doing this with light olive oil. You can do it with ghee. You can do it with any neutral oil of your choice. Yeah, I've highlighted you in, in the... Oh, thank you. I uh, appreciate then, that. Uh, I think it's a, a light coming line was highlighted. Good. Yes. Okay, perfect. So this is my sandwich board that I'm going to get to in a minute. <clears throat> Once the oil is hot, everything that I will be making in this shakshuka is tomato based. You can also use a combination of garlic and tomatoes and basil. If you want to make it the Indian style, you will focus more on cilantro as the herb of choice instead of basil. And that's totally a matter of personal preference. My mother-in-law does not use garlic. <clears throat> but if you really want to take it into the Mediterranean spin, feel free to use garlic. Just make sure whenever you make any Mediterranean or continental style dishes, do not wait for the oil to heat up to add your garlic. Add garlic to cold oil so that it will stay with the... Uh, it will infuse gradually into the food and it will stay till the end. So that's the difference between Indian cooking and Conti cooking. You don't add anything to hot oil. <clears throat> the garlic goes into cold oil. Okay, so the tomatoes go in. As soon as you add the tomatoes, always add the entire amount of salt that you're going to need for this dish, okay? So basically you have to make a paste out of these tomatoes. <clears throat> you can use a combination of canned and fresh. These are Roma tomatoes. You can use plum tomatoes, beef steak tomatoes, whatever. I've added some turmeric and I'm going to add some shakshuka. S-H-A-K-S-H-U-K-A. <coughs> My mother-in-law also likes to add coriander seed powder. So I'm going to add that. This is dhania powder. We're going to give it a quick stir. If you eat chilies, if you like heat, then add a squirt of hot sauce or add green chilies at this point. If you don't, then you can absolutely skip that step. My heat is medium high and as soon as the salt touches the tomatoes, you can see it gets to work and it starts to release a lot of moisture, right? So we are going to keep this right on the pan, on the stove, cover it and let it do its thing. Okay, in the meantime, while that is happening, we are going to move to making our zucchini fritters. And for that, we need some very simple ingredients. <coughs> yes, I'm going to shallow fry them. You can deep fry them. You can also air fry them. You can bake them. Hello, Kina. Good morning. I am making a Mother's Day brunch in which I'm doing a shakshuka, I'm doing zucchini fritters, and I'm going to be doing cucumber sandwiches just for the moms in our lives. My mouth is watering already. All right, so come on over. <laughs> I'm going to switch this out just so that the camera focuses better on what I'm working closely on. So guys, audience, everybody there, friends, I mean, you got some ideas. I hope we have your attention and I hope yeah. you're, oh, happy yes. Mother's Day to you. Yeah, it is super early, but you know what, better yeah. early than late. I am catering parties on Saturday and Sunday, so I really will not have the time to do this. Actually, there's a bridal shower that I'm catering on uh, Saturday and zucchini fritters is going to be one of the things that I'm going to be making. And for Sunday's uh, brunch, shakshuka is one of the dishes that I'm going to be making. So you know what, you are... 
literally getting a front row seat to my cooking studio, to my chef life without ever having to buy a ticket. Okay, so since we are going to deep fry the, the shallow fry the zucchini fritters, I am going to put some oil in my pan and I'm going to allow this to heat. I haven't done any prep yet. I'm going to show you what all goes into making the batter for the zucchini fritters. And what, kind of, what, what kind of oil is that? This is uh, light olive oil. Okay. It's not the green one. If you if you want to make it in the green one, you can. Mediterranean dishes really taste very good if you have a very good quality olive oil. So no harm in doing that. Just don't overheat it. You can also make all these dishes in ghee. It tastes absolutely phenomenal. Okay, so this is my one zucchini that I've grated oh. with the skin on. Okay. Okay, and... Uh, uh, eggs I can over. Yes. I just want to... Uh, give a little quick tip here. There is also a combination of oils which is uh, available in uh, the supermarket. It has olive oil and the vegetable oil. So you get the taste of both and you can fry in that and it, the smoking point on that is very high. You can oh, that's good. You know, go to the frying uh, because most of the olive oils, you know, they have a very low smoking fried. point. Yes, yes. Not, uh, and then the food tastes. tends to have like an aftertaste, especially for us Indian palates. I feel like yeah. we get that aftertaste of the olives, which we don't appreciate. So it's the so, best <laughs> oil that you get in the supermarket. So there is a comment. So I'm just going to tell my Queen's Curry Kitchen friends on this screen. So Nandini Ji, who is on our Zoom session and on DDG. Just mentioned that there is a combination of vegetable oil and olive oil that you can buy from the supermarket. You can use that. It has a very high smoking point. So you can actually fry stuff. You can actually saute stuff for prolonged periods of time. I'm just going to show you the quick progress on the tomatoes and how it's looking right now. You see how much moisture comes out of it? Yes. Okay. So this is, this is the idea. Like once it starts to release the moisture, we're going to wait for all the tomatoes to break down. But we are not trying to dry the tomatoes. In this liquid that is happening, we are going to poach our eggs as if we were frying it in the tomatoes instead of frying it in the oil. So we're going to put the cover right back on and um, turn the heat to medium. <clears throat> now, one big, good question. If somebody is a vegetarian, then can you skip the, the egg part? Or not? Uh, no, for vegetarians, now there is a product that's called Just Egg. If you're vegetarian or vegan, there is a product called Just Egg and you get it in the section where you have the cheeses and the juices. And it's like a yellow bottle. It's a yellow liquid which is made from, I think, uh, moon beans, and it's made from tapioca starch to mimic oh, the texture to mimic the delicious. texture of eggs. It's delicious. Okay, so my my pan got super heated, and I don't want and I really don't want my fire alarm to go off. So I've taken the stove off the oil off the heat a little bit. Okay, now since we are not going to make the entire quantity here, I'm going to work on a much smaller quantity. I just wanted to show you what an entire zucchini yields. This is one entire zucchini. This is how much you get. So it's a very uh, economical recipe. We are going to squeeze out. I'm just going to work with this much, which is a handful. And I will squeeze out some of the liquid. Now, you don't want it to be bone dry because you want that moisture. You want your uh, fritters to taste really moist. So you're not going to do an overkill with squeezing the liquid out. I'm just going to go over the sink, squeeze it, and be right back. And you can do it in a, in a strainer, you can do it in a cheesecloth. Just don't make it all the way dry. Squeeze it a little bit and then leave it moist a little bit. Okay, so I am back. This is what it looks like. It does have a little bit of moisture. The first thing that's going to go in is one clove of garlic. If you don't have garlic, you can use garlic powder. That's fine too. Grate that into that, uh, yes, I'm grating it directly into the zucchinis. You can also grate your onion right into here. I just don't like to grate everything. Whenever I make any kind of fritters, I like the textural contrast. So if I'm chopping something, I will grate another thing. If I'm grating something, then I'll powder a third thing just to keep it interesting in terms of textures, right? So usually people will grate uh, the onions right into here. I'm not grating it. I'm just going to use chopped tomatoes hello hello yes i am live <laughs> my friend is asking me hey Nupur, are you live yes it's me okay, okay so, so no you just uh, have the i have the zucchini yeah and you have the oil and you just just put it in there that's it no 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 no, no, no we're not no not yet not yet 
The next thing that goes in is an egg. So again, if you don't eat eggs, you can use just egg. And if you really want to basify this recipe, you can use besan or chickpea flour. One whole egg with the yolk and everything. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you. Yes. So if you're a vegetarian, just use um, chickpea flour. Although it won't taste quite the same. Right? So now we're going to go in and add a little bit of baking powder. Not baking soda, just a tad bit of baking powder. Hi Bharti, good morning to you. Welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. We are doing a Mother's Day brunch for all the people just joining in on DDG. Just adding a little pinch of baking powder. If your baking powder is old, make sure you run it through a sieve or a strainer so that there are no lumps of baking powder. The next thing that's going to go in is just good old flour. Just whole wheat flour, bleached flour, whatever you have, maida. And I added just a tad bit of cornstarch to this, okay? So just maybe a tablespoon of it, not too much. If you add too much flour, then it becomes kind of tough and you don't want, you don't want tough zucchini fritters. You want very soft and moist and just like tempura, like when you make zucchini batter, don't over mix it like cake batter. Don't over mix anything. Just keep it. You just do a couple of swirls and everything gets incorporated. You're in a good place. Now I'm going to add. Something uh, that okay, yes, uh, Rupert, we have to refresh ourselves because some people don't know. Sure. And they don't know exactly. What so let me go back it. into the shock sugar recipe. This is oil that I heated up in this pan. I added one and a, I added two and a half tomatoes and a salt, turmeric and coriander seed powder for all the people that are just tuning in. Also, don't forget to catch the replay. If you missed something, if we keep going back and forth, yeah, I think exactly. we'll never catch up. So do do remember to catch the replay. These are really, really simple recipes. Uh, I'm eyeballing everything. I don't have a written measurement, but I'm just telling you right off the cuff what it is. And this should serve two to three people, right? So tomatoes are breaking down. As soon as you add salt to the tomatoes, saute them for two seconds and then add, cover your pan. When it gets to this stage, when it's as liquid as this, and most of the tomatoes have broken down, that's the time when you're going to break your eggs. Right, not your eggs, chicken eggs. Right. It's a Middle Eastern recipe, right? Yes, it's a Middle Eastern recipe. Okay. I'm going to for a couple of ladies who just joined. So I'm just going to bring this a little bit closer so you can see, and then I'll move it back to the other burner. So you just take an egg. Now, I've, I've done this many times, so I break it right on top of the pan. But if you've not had too much experience with cracking an egg and putting it in there, you can always gather it in a bowl and drop it. But I like to do it one at a time because then that way you can spread out where it sits. And basically, this dish is usually served in the pan in which it's cooked. Oh. Yeah, so you don't really mess around with it. You don't touch it too much after it's been done, right? You just drop it. two eggs. How many eggs do you four. Need? I'm putting four eggs for two people. So depending on yeah, depending on how many dishes you're serving. If this is the only dish you're serving, then factor two to three eggs per person. If uh, you're serving multiple things and this is just a part of the brunch, then you can factor one egg per person because then you have a whole spread from which they'll be eating. Uh, so Looper is actually uh, showing us some some good items or good things. Easy for Mother's Day brunch items. Mother's Day, Mother's Day brunch. So and. Uh, I don't, I don't mean anybody to be ambitious and make all three, but if you can just make one or two, that should be fine too. And you know, depending on if you eat eggs, if you don't eat eggs, there's just so many variables, right? So this is how it looks as soon as it drops into the hot tomatoes, all the yolks are intact and it's a matter of personal preference if you like to um, eat hard yolks or soft yolks, whatever it is, but it starts to cook, right? So as soon as that happens, you're going to go in here, turn up the flame to medium high. Crack in some black pepper. Now remember we've already added the salt to the tomatoes, right? Right. So now we only have to have enough salt to cover the eggs. And eggs by default have a very salty uh, taste. So just yeah. add a little bit of salt right on top of each egg. And then I also like to add a hint of paprika powder just because it gives a beautiful color. So I'm going to yes. sprinkle it and I'm going to bring it back to the screen so y'all can get a closer look at what it looks like. And this is just super appetizing. Some people also like to add cheese to their shakshuka. Especially if you go to Turkey or wherever, they will add cheese. Some people like to add spinach. So you know what? Make it your own. Do what makes you happy. There's no hard and fast. Yes. At what point do you put 
basil or cilantro in it? If you're putting cilantro, don't put it into the oil, put it into the liquid. If you want maximum flavor out of cilantro, then put it, put the stems. Basil, you can, whenever you use basil, always rip it up and put it. Try not to cut it or try not to put it whole oh, because okay. then... What was that? What was that? What, what, what is this? I've put uh, spring onions, the, just the green part of the spring onions right here on top and I've put cilantro. So okay. you can see the eggs are continuing to cook and I've just topped it. You can see the little uh, pinches of paprika that I've put on top. Yes. And now I'm just going to cover it. So literally I have to poach these eggs in that tomato paste. That's what's going on. Is Not rocket science. Thing? So the whole thing takes so about 15, 20 minutes to make? Or Not even. Yeah. Now if you do like canned tomatoes or something, it, it could go faster than that. Okay. So now our batter has rested for a couple of minutes. I am going to go ahead and add Nigella seeds, which is Kalonji. This is what really gives it a nice Turkish flavor. And you may have eaten this dish in Turkish restaurants, in Middle Eastern restaurants, and you've paid an arm and a leg, and you get like two appetizers for two pieces of this for $13 or whatever. Yes. Right? So that's going to give it that characteristic flavor. I am going to add a little bit of salt. Not too much. Like I said, eggs already have an inherent salty flavor. A pinch of paprika. You can add turmeric if you want. I just don't add it. Instead, yes, I add paprika because I don't eat mirchi. So if you if you eat mirchi, you can add cayenne pepper. If you like heat, go for it. I just don't eat any kind of heat in my food, so I don't add any of those things. All right. If anybody has any comments, any questions, if you've made this before in your house, let me know. I'm gonna add some parsley flakes just to give it a little yes. no, well, dimension of flavor. Add, what are people over here watching? So like, is asking, is any questions or anything that you want? Okay, I'm going to bring the oil back. Yes, sure. Go ahead. Now, many people, uh -huh. I know, they don't eat garlic. Okay. Right? Now, for the flavor, can that be substituted with a shallot? Well, most people that don't eat garlic won't eat shallots either. No, because garlic, uh, shallot is not very powerful in that taste and it just has that little flavor. So, you can use heen, you can use asafoetida. If you don't want to use, you can use shallots. Shallots are super mild. Also, you can use shallots after you finish cooking. So you can just top it with finely chopped shallots. You can do that. Right? Yeah. So there's many ways to incorporate that. Yeah. So many people, you know, when I know they don't like the taste of garlic in the food. Okay. If they eat an onion or something. Yeah. If you don't eat garlic, you can use onions. You can use shallots. You can use spring onions. Any of that is possible. Okay. Now my oil is hot. I'm just going to test it. When I dip my wooden spoon in there, it should form bubbles around it, which it is doing right now. So that's the way you test your oil. I put a little bit of uh, atta or something. In it. Yeah, so if you put your, if you dip your wooden spoon around it, you'll see bubbles, right? So, okay, so I'm going to take two spoons and just... Oh, okay. I think it needs a little more flour, but you know, just always test with one first to see that yeah. It's not falling apart. Uh, same thing like making pakoras. Right? Yeah, same, same thing. And when you when you do that, then once you drop it in, just press it down with the same yeah. spoon. And then take the spoon, dip it in the oil and oil the spoon so that nothing sticks to the back of the spoon. Okay, so it's literally like making your spoons non-stick. Let me flip the camera just a little bit more so you can get a better view. DDG, is the view good? Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Too, yes. Hey Tim, good morning. We are making Mother's Day recipes. I am making zucchini fritters from the Middle East. I'm also making an egg shakshuka for you. You could do it with just egg. You could do it with tofu. So one more and then just press it down and always make sure that the heat is, you know, because of the baking powder, this is going to brown very quickly. So by the time you finish making it, this is already starting to brown. So you can lower the heat at this one just so that you can control everything better. And you saw with a handful of zucchini how much I'm getting. Like I'm making so many fritters. Rupa, can I ask you a question? Sure. After you make this, are you going to eat everything? Yes. I won't eat the fritters because they have... <laughs> no, because this this has gluten, so I won't be eating these. But no, the but cucumber sure. sandwich I'm going to do with gluten-free bread. And I also eat eggs. So I, I will... Yeah. That I want to see. That's yeah. Person. Yeah. I so I won't be eating the zucchini the, fritters because this is gluten, but... No more. Yes. Now the other question is sure. you can do it, do these in the air fryer. Yes, you can. 
Yeah, you can do this in the air fryer. Just spray it nicely and toss it in there. And already, I, it's very fragrant right now. I'm going to try to pick it up. Hello, Rebecca. Good morning to you. I am making a Mother's Day brunch. So whether you're cooking for your mom or you're cooking for your children's grandmothers, your mother-in-laws, or just cook for yourself. Hey, you know what? I'm an empty nester. Nobody's coming. <laughs> My daughter did send the chocolates early uh, for Mother's Day, and she sent a beautiful handwritten note. But no one's going to come and cook for me, so I'm just going to do it for myself. Hey, why not, right? I got beautiful flowers from Kamleshji. She's right here. Thank you so much. Beautiful. For this is <laughs> smelling so good. Beautiful cake. It does look like a cake. It looks like a cake. And I was, the first time I saw I said, really? Is this really a flower? That's amazing. I was going to it up. Maybe there's a cake inside. My husband said, they got cake to me and there's cake. I don't know. It's only flowers. So cute. Yeah. Okay. So now, now that I have all my ducks in tow, I can actually increase the heat because I know that I'm fully focused on this, right? Don't forget that you have another thing on the stovetop, so you don't want to give that stepmotherly treatment. You don't want the eggs to overcook. Now, if you like the yolks to be hard, then you can cook it for some extra time. But if you like the soft, sunny side eggs, then keep an eye on it, okay? Because I like them sunny side. Yes. A question or? Sure. Uh huh. Right. So, can that be also transferred? Yeah, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how I transfer it. So this is pretty so much done. Can you bake it in the oven also? Yes, you can bake it in a foil foil pan, or you can bake it in a casserole, and you can stick it in the oven. What I do is I cut around the eggs. So these are completely done. I like this little bit of liquid because whenever you're using any breads or flatbreads, you want to soak up all the tomatoey broth. And I like to just cut around it. Once the yolk has somewhat taken some shape and the white has taken some shape, then you can just lift it up and put the tomatoes on the base and then put the cooked egg on top and that's how you're going no, to no, take no. it. What do, you, what do you eat this with? Rice or something? Or no, bread? you eat this You eat this with pita bread. You eat this with garlic bread. You can eat any kind of okay, flat bread. Yeah. But rice, you can't put it in a rice. Can you? My family eats it with, with chapatis. Okay. Yeah, for breakfast. But if you're if you're traveling in Turkey or you're in the Middle East, you'll get like a pide bread or you'll get like a yeah, pita or you'll get a lavash. Bread. Whatever it is that they're going to serve you, that's what you're going to eat. Sourdough bread tastes very Yes, yeah, sourdough as well. Especially if you have spinach in this and cheese, then you do it with sourdough. It tastes really, really good. Yeah. Okay, so these are what the fritters are looking right now. And you can see some of them are, are dark, some of them are light because we put yeah. them all at different times. So we're going to allow this some time to cook. And don't be... Um, don't start panicking if you see that the sides are crisping up a little bit or they're a little bit brown. It's okay. It's not going to burn. Our heat is on medium. One dish is already done. How many minutes have we been into this thing? So we have been into this thing about 15-20 minutes. The fritters are almost done. The eggs are done. Now I'm going to jump to making the cucumber sandwich. Uh, one, my, uh, one person who inspired right away. That's Indra. She said she's going to make it on Saturday. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so are we invited or what? <laughs> <laughs> she's going to make it for Saturday brunch. That's what I love to hear. Like, you know, if you see something, and I try to keep it as simple as possible so that you can make it in your home. You can, you know, I'm not... Uh, they look super simple. But it's really it. simple. I mean, these are just ingredients that you have in your house. And, you know, summer is here, so there is a, an abundance mm -hmm. of squash. You can make this with loki, like if you don't have squash, make it with loki. I was just going to say that, can you make it with loki? Yeah, make, and you know, in, in Turkey, they make it with pumpkin, they make it with, you could literally do it with any kind of vegetable that's going to hold up. Right? And this, their food is very similar to the Indian food. Then because it's very food. similar, but they don't use a whole lot of spices, Veenaji, that's the thing. And the cooking techniques are very different. So they don't overcook anything, they don't um, saute anything for a long time. So that's why it's a little bit different, okay? So I'm just going to... Drain the ones that are getting ready. I'm going to lift them off and drain them on a paper towel. I think the Indian people, I think Indians, they overcook everything, right? Yes, they do. Like and even our cauliflower dishes, you know, any kind of vegetables, we really yeah. overcook it and, you know, know, soften the crap out of it. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of rare anything, like in, in meats. Like I don't like rare don't like, lamb or like medium rare. I like everything well done. But when it comes to vegetables, I like that little bit of crunch. So if you like the crunch, you can actually try to make this with cabbage. 
it's going to taste absolutely phenomenal. Wow. Yeah, you wow. can make it with cabbage and you can serve it with, with like a Thai sweet dipping sauce or like a soy based sauce and it's going to be really, really good. Or you can just serve it with hot sauce, which is a sriracha mayonnaise or something or honey sriracha dipping sauce. You can, you can give it a very Asian twist, right? So conceptually, it's going to be the same thing, but you can just take it to any part of the world that you want to take it, depending on what the flavor oh, profile uh, is. Uh, what, what is the Turkish, what kind of, what kind of a sauce do they use? They don't serve this with any sauce. It's just eaten by itself. And sometimes it's eaten with a big dollop of yogurt. So in their food, there's a lot of dairy. So there's yogurt, there's cheese, cream cheese, there's lebne. So all of this is... I'm actually going to plate an entire thing after we're done. So you'll see how all the accompaniments and the accoutrements work. I have everything set up, so I'll do that. Okay. One thing you can also add to your zucchini fritters is dill. And dill is an herb that looks like this. I don't yeah. know what it's called in Hindi, but this is what it looks like. It looks like little pine oh, needles. So. Uh, but you also have it in a... Uh, like a yeah, you get it in a bunch too. Bunch. Dill. D-I-L-L. Dill is soe. Soe. Okay. I don't know what it's called in Hindi. Soe or something like that. In, I know in Sindhi it's called suwa. So, you know, suwa ji bhaji. Suwa ji. Suwa. Like that. Yeah. So, suwa. you can use dill. And so the combination of the garlic, the olive oil, the nigella seeds and the dill, it really is a great flavor profile and it's very hearty for breakfast. Plus the eggs have their own flavor that they bring to the table. So I've just drained this out. The eggs are done. Soya. 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 Something. Because it looks like swinya. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right, so we have two two items that are already done. Let me just plate those. So we're going to go with the zucchini fritters first. And I'm going to just stack them up really nice. Yeah, of course. So, Indra is saying that if you're eating Turkish food, then you have to eat it in a Turkish style. For that, we have to go to Turkey. Can we substitute sour cream sometimes? Just use, yeah, you can use sour cream. If, if you don't have yogurt, then just use, sour, even in your lassi, like when you want to make lassi or when you want to make dukh and you want to give it that authentic India wala taste, then even in your lassi dishes, add a little bit of sour cream along with the yogurt. It's really going to elevate, it's going to elevate your uh, yogurt dishes. So, okay, now, uh, Nandini ji, I'm going to go ahead and plate this the way I told you we would. So just move the eggs to the side. Are you able to see properly? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, so yeah, just move the eggs to the side, okay, go in for the tomatoes and let's say you're only serving one portion or something, right? Get a spoon with which you can pick up the tomato -y broth, right? And just make a little puddle of it at the bottom. And you know, some of the eggs also crumble at the bottom and they give it a nice right, base. Right. Okay. You can also use the bullet chilies, which are not that spicy. You can use little pieces of that. You can use bell peppers, whatever you have. So it's basically just a nice color explosion with the reds and the yellows. Now you can see I have done hard yolks only because I'm not serving this right now. This is probably going to be my husband's dinner. So I fully cooked the yolks. If you're going to use runny eggs, then just don't cook it to that point. Just make sure that the white part is well cooked so that you're not getting any raw eggs. And also if you plan to reheat it, you can leave it a little bit underdone. Hello, Nina. Good morning. Rebecca, good morning. Welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. Okay, now we are going to go in with some cilantro and put that on here. Right, so you no need to serve it in the pan you made it in. You can actually serve it in a plate like this. Perfect. Okay, so two, two of our dishes are done. Now we're going to move on to the third thing, which is going to be very simple, which is our cucumber sandwich. I would have loved to do a dessert as well, but... I just really don't have the time today. So if you're if you're gonna do a Mother's Day cake, I was gonna do baklava, but it takes time, you know, to make it and mm -hmm. bake it. So I decided against it. However, before जब तक आप अपने gadgets इकट्ठे करते हो sandwich के लिए एक quick tip मैं दे दूँ आप sure go for it yes go for it yes so, I know we all like to make omelets and scrambled eggs uh, in the pan, you know. So many times what I do is, uh, if I'm a little creative, you know, running a little, up in relaxed mood, scramble the eggs, I take uh, 
onion, saute it nicely. Taki us me pani ni rai. You saute it to the point when it stops, uh, you know, sizzling. You add some peas and carrots, which are frozen wale hain. Add those mm -hmm. to that, and uh, some spinach and uh, kale. Make like a little uh, sabzi type kind of a thing. Add it to the egg batter, uh, jo apne banaya hai, uh, egg, oh, egg okay. chicken, okay. right? Add it to the egg, mm -hmm. and then pour it in a little dish. You know, you grease it up and you pour it in that dish, and you stick it in the oven. So you time it for about ten, twelve minutes. You can even do it in the air fryer. Great. No more than no more than ten minutes, right? And then when you you're almost done, right? Garam garam pe you put some grated cheese and leave it, and then you're ready to eat. It becomes like a gluten-free quiche. Nice. So almost like a frittata. Almost like a frittata, but no no uh, flour, no. Uh, That's great. Atta, no basin, All right. No, in that. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, jump into making the cucumber sandwich. I'm using a gluten free like bread. Pizza, like pizza. Oh, oh, that sounds very good. You know, I make that in a, in a different thing. Like, uh, you know, those things, when you, you make a pancake in, pancake, yeah. so you can Yes, yeah. that tastes really good too. Yeah, you can make it in that too. So yeah, you can actually do that thing with this batter too, with the zucchinis. You can make it in the pancake maker. You can make it in the waffle maker. You just have to change the yeah. change the flour that you're using. If right. you don't want to do gluten, you can uh, switch out to uh, rice flour. You can switch out to chickpea flour. You can do almond flour, whatever you have. Especially if you're using egg in anything and you use almond flour, it tastes really, really good. The texture comes almond out really good. Almond flour tastes really good because it is very dense and... Uh, yeah, and it's it's got that toasty flavor when it cooks like that, yes. okay? So, yeah, so Tim, I am also on a Zoom uh, program where we're on a radio slash TV Facebook show. So they are talking and, you know, we're sharing tips on how to do other things with eggs. I think eggs are just so versatile. All right, so jumping into our cucumber sandwich, I'm using a gluten-free bread. Now, I'm going to show you the technique of what all we put in here, but if you is want it, to... Uh, Lupa, can you give the name of the bread and is it... Uh... What kind of bread is that? I got this. This is a gluten-free bread and it's from Aldi's. But there is a nice gluten-free brand called Char. This is this is from Aldi's. It's called Live Free. This is a gluten-free okay. bread. Okay. Um, you can gluten-free bread everywhere. Yeah, you get it in the regular supermarket. The supermarket. Just, okay. Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's has so there is a there is a brand called S C H A R that's called Char S C H A R R that's a gluten free brand they do breads they do wraps but Aldi I live right by one so they do okay, okay. so now if you're gonna do this cucumber sandwich for evening tea then you're gonna use the softest bread that you can get if you want to do it for brunch you're gonna serve an open style sandwich like a crostini size style sandwich. If you don't have bread and you have those little crackers, you can make the same thing for crackers and it's going to work really well. You can also toast the bread beforehand instead of using the white, you know, untoasted bread. Okay. For the spread, basically remember whatever spread you're going to use, especially in a closed sandwich, that is going to be the glue for your sandwich. Right. So some of the options are this is a mayo with dill that I made. I put some dill, some mayo and some sriracha, salt and pepper and some garlic powder. So this is just an aioli. It's called an aioli. When you elevate your mayo by adding other herbs or um, condiments, it becomes an aioli. So this is an aioli with dill and garlic. So that is one option. You can also use uh, cream cheese, but make sure it's softened. Don't use it right out of the fridge. Make sure you soften it, especially if you're making cold sandwiches to go on road trips or whatever. You know what? Maybe I'll do another whole session on sandwiches and how you can travel with them so that yes, they don't fall apart. That, we will do that. We'll do right. we'll do a whole session of summer sandwiches, okay? Yeah, yes. All right, so let's start into let's get into assembling this. I'm not a fan of tomatoes, but I've kept some just for the sake of this video. I hate tomatoes like from the core of my heart, but uh, <laughs> It's just here. Okay, let's just leave it at that. So I'm going to use a little bit of cream cheese and you don't want to do too much, right? Especially if your bread is soft, you don't want to do too much. You want to do just enough to create a barrier between the bread and your cucumbers. 
Also, I am using the Persian cucumbers. If you use the Indian cucumbers, you have to salt them, draw out the moisture, and then use them. Otherwise, it tastes. Otherwise, it releases a lot of moisture, right? So cut them really, really thin. If you have a mandolin slicer, you can cut it with that, or you can cut it just like this. So I'm gonna just flip the camera so my Facebook family can see it really well. And then, you want to see that? I'm going to do the sandwich. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me just turn the screen. Right. Yeah. There. Yeah. That's better. That's better. Yeah. Okay. So at any point, if you feel like you can't see, just let me know. Yeah. No. Now we can see. Okay. So I'm going to serve this as an open sandwich. So it has to be like you know very pretty and dainty. So just try to play with colors. If you have something green, then you want to add something red. If you have something red at the bottom, you want to add like herbs or whatever. You might want to do. Uh, the only thing you did was uh, put. Uh, the I've just cheese. put the cream cheese so far. Nothing else. Okay, and just try to use even slices so that it looks uniform. And if it's thinly sliced on a mandolin, it looks really, really pretty because then, you know, it's it's a very visual thing. I think I'm just going to trim so, uh, these. I might have one lady coming over one day for like, lunch or brunch or something. All right. So, so you know what to do, Veena Ji then. Hell yeah. This it's so easy. Cut. It's really easy. It's not rocket science. You can absolutely make this. You know, it works really well any time of day. With a cup of chai, with some coffee. Should I make it or should I call you to come and help me? Listen, whatever, whatever makes you happy, do that. Okay, so now I'm going to, for, for finishing the topping of this, I'm going to use mayo. If you don't eat mayo or if you don't eat uh, regular mayo, then you can uh, use vegan mayo. You can also use just Greek yogurt. You can use sour cream and make an aioli out of that. Did you, add, did you add anything in the mayo? Um, this is a dill. This is dill and hot dill. sauce and garlic that I added to the mayo to make oh. an aioli out of it, like the way I explained at the beginning. Okay. And I'm just oh. gonna drizzle this. Ideally, if you have it in a squeeze bottle, it it really comes out pretty. All my yes. squeeze bottles have chutney in them, so none is available right now. So I'm just going to smear and slather. Also, when you slather the veggies with something. It acts as a barrier and prevents it from drying out. So let's say you're setting out a really pretty platter, but people are not coming for the next hour and a half. Right? You don't want to be sitting there making sandwiches for 30 people in the last minute. So if you slather it with something. Yes. Can I ask you or say something? Sure. Right. Joe, the tomatoes that you have sliced. Yeah. I see that it has seeds in it. Yeah. So can we remove the seeds? Or is it better to remove the seeds if we are keeping them? For if you're going to make a sandwich, sandwich, always, uh, it, it'll depend on what kind of tomato it is. It has to be a very firm tomato. Like you, if I press it, it's not right. going to make a dent. There's no juice coming out of the tomato. Like I'm pressing really hard, right. but there is no juice coming out. So if you have a firm tomato, then only you should use it on a sandwich. Do not use uh, pulpy tomatoes. Do not try to oh, use yeah, tomatoes yeah. that are going bad and say, oh, you know what? I'm going to use it and make get some mileage out of the tomatoes that are uh, going soft. That's not the tomato that you need to use for sandwich. Those tomatoes you're going to use for your shakshuka. So okay. if you have tomatoes that are already softening up, this is what you're going to make, what we just made. Right? For the people that are just tuning into my channel, hello, Muktai, good morning. We just finished making uh, egg shakshuka and we made Turkish zucchini fritters. So we are plating an entire uh, brunch menu for Mother's Day. That's what we're doing. Now the thing that really takes it over the top is this. It's called bagel seed, everything but the everything bagel seasoning. Everything bagel. Right? Yes. So this is easily available in all these Trader Joe's everywhere. So you're going to take that and you're going to generously sprinkle that on top of your sandwich. What is it called again? Everything bagel? Everything, everything bagel, bagel seasoning. So it's not oh. the bagel, but it's just all of the right, right, right. Seasoning. Yes. combinations. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful to see you too, my darling. And then the last thing that you're going to do is now, if you want to serve this whole thing as one, you can. If you want to make it a little more dainty, you can cut it into quarters. The best time to cut a sandwich is if you let it sit in the fridge for 15 to 20 minutes so that all of the cream cheese and everything can harden up. And then it's a clean cut, okay? This is. Tell everybody that Nupur is making a. Just showing us different, different items. I'm doing a Mother's Day brunch, which is Middle Eastern inspired. And now if you want to do all three, you are more than welcome. Watch the program. So we have the dill. And I'm going to go in and add some paprika. You can do Hungarian paprika, smoked paprika. You can do tahin. Whatever kind of seasoning, whatever kind of red thing you have at home, you can do that. Okay, that's that. And this is going to go. I'm going to uh, not wait to put it in the fridge. I will cut it, but... <laughs> do not try this at home. If you want to cut your sandwich... 
Come, come. Come over. I'm home. I'm home for a little bit. So come over and eat it. So if uh, I'm not going to wait to put it in the fridge, I'm going to cut it right now. But when you do this at home, take this whole thing, put it in the fridge, let it set for 15, 20, 30 minutes and then cut it so that it'll be a nice and clean cut. Okay. I'm going to remove this herb. Okay, so that means you can make it well. Uh, yes, you can. Hand. You can. Before. You certainly, you should actually make it, but don't, don't cut it before, cut it just before serving. Oh, that's the okay. trick. Yeah, that's the trick. Do like a good sandwich. If you want to make it ahead of time, like, you know, people have uh, sandwiches for catering and parties and all that stuff. How do you think they do it? Yeah. They're not making it on two minutes before they're being I know, served. I know, I know. All these conferences and conventions, you know, you have sandwich boxes. Yeah. No, no, these are open face sandwiches. If you're making it for evening tea parties, then you have to do another bread on top. Okay, this is for brunch. Yeah, brunch. this is for brunch. So brunch is usually you're already eating so many carbs, you want to do open face sandwiches so that you're not eating too many carbs, right? So this is what it's going to look like. I have a sandwich board here and I'm going to oh, so awesome. serve oh. this right here. Yeah, and I really want to, uh, I, really will, I would love it if you do another session just for sandwiches. I will do a sandwich session. A lot of people ask about it, so I'm definitely going to do it. So I'm just going to try to make it look pretty and you know, visually you have to see like where, yes. where it looks best. So this is what it looks like. If anybody wants to take a screenshot from my Queen's Curry Kitchen family, go ahead. If anybody wants to take a screenshot here. So I'm just going to step back. Hold it again. Hold it again. Okay, here. There you go. I'll show you the entire platter once I'm done. So we'll be taking pictures of everything. Okay, so this is what your open face sandwich looks like. And these are served cold. So the colder it is, the better it is. This is everything. This is our three recipes that we created today and completed. So I'm going to put this aside and now I'm going to show you the entire presentation. So hang in there with me. Give me two minutes till I clean up this space because this is our focal point and I don't want to miss out on anything. No, but you're talking about it until you get it. Yeah. Can we also add arugula, you know, on the side? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, the, uh, so the brunch party that I'm catering for Sunday, I will be adding microgreens to this. Right, so you can you can do a lot of things, especially if it's a closed sandwich. You can do arugula, just do anything that's going to hold up, right? So, yeah, you could you could do stuff like this too. You could do these microgreens. They are really good on top of sandwiches, and, and they have oh, yeah, yeah, they they give a very dainty look. So we can do a couple of those. Yeah, you can do it right on top of the sandwich. You can do it on the side. Right? Yeah. So just trying to make it as healthy and wholesome as possible. Also, it's like visually, it's such a pretty look. Yeah, they look, they look very appealing. And it's very elegant. It's, you know, it doesn't take, even if you did just the sandwich and a cup of coffee for your mom, I think she'll be pleased. Right? Also, if you're a new mom and you don't have that kind of time, but you still want to do something for your mom, you should be able to do it. It's all in the tray. Yes. <laughs> Whooper is all ready to give to somebody now. Who I'm try who's coming? I don't know. Come over. Somebody needs to come over to my house. Who's coming? Really somebody needs to come. I'm going to come right now. So I'm just going to rearrange things because um, this tray may not be big enough for everything. But let's see. It's an art just to try to fit everything. So let's put the biggest thing first. Okay. That goes down. And then this goes in. Like that. I have this. I have my dates. I have my fritters, so I think, so fritters can also be served really nicely with any kind of cream or whatever, and they taste really good with a yogurt dipping sauce and whatnot. And then of course I have some fruits. I don't have any cheeses on this board, which I should have, but I don't. Okay, so this is the full platter. Oh, oh look at that, I gotta take a picture. So this with like a nice cup of Turkish coffee or cardamom coffee or masala chai would be really good. You can serve some pita breads with butter on the side. You can serve some garlic bread on the side. This is the entire spread. Can you just hold that for us? Yes, sure, please? sure. If anybody wants to take a picture, feel free to do that. If you, if this inspired you, I put some pineapple, so you know, you can have some fresh fruit. There's also some dates and uh, walnuts. So, you know, just a munch. And on your fruit, you can put something like a tahini dressing, which like really spices it up. This is like a lemony, spicy kind of a 
sprinkling of seasoning and it's really really yummy so try to use it on your mango salads or pineapple any kind of tropical fruit tastes really good so this is our entire spread for mother's day you can see we have some walnuts we have some uh, dates from syria we have our open face cucumber sandwiches we have fresh pineapples we have a dill dipping sauce for the zucchini fritters right there and we have our shakshuka which is right there so if I can do it, you can do it too. It's really not that complicated. I've given you from the simple to the complicated. And a lot of times, you know, you have a lot of help from store-bought ingredients. So try to make the most of those. And uh, do a combination. Not everything has to be made at home from scratch. Try to do a combination of whatever is available and, you know, make the most of it. So that's our presentation for Mother's Day. I don't know if you're a mom yet or not, or if your mom lives with you or not. I'm not going to see either one of my moms, not my mother-in-law, not my mom. But this is something I truly enjoy doing and thankfully I'm catering parties for someone else's Mother's Day. So I hope this inspired you to do something similar for your mom. Let me also, um, onto this tray, let me add what my daughter sent me for Mother's Day. It's a card that says, Happy Mother's Day to the best mom in the world. Wow. So that goes in. And she also sent me these chocolates. This is, not a, this is not a sponsored post. I just think that these are just so pretty that they should be on here so she sent me chocolates from madhu uh it's a it's a brand that uh, they have flavors never like lemon coriander uh cardamom dark coconut milk cashew and iduki black pepper so these are i all i already finished there was one more which the name i can't re recall right now but these are the chocolates that came so it's like a really nice um spring bouquet of stuff and uh I'm thoroughly going to. I'm going to bring it on Monday, so you, I, because I'm not going to eat all this by myself. So I'll, I'll bring it on Monday, so we can all. Just hold up the madhu one more time. Yes, sure. It's called madhu M A D H U, and it's got a, it's got cacao, so it's not really chocolate, chocolate, right? But I just love the. It's made in cocoa. Yes, cocoa. Yeah. So not not loaded with sugar. It's not overly yeah, sweet. Yeah. So this is our new Mother's Day platter with the Mother's Day card from my daughter wow, <laughs> Included that. so now it's fully complete, right? So this is what we did today So the so let let the let the celebrations begin let the festivities begin Let's take the time to honor all the mothers that have made so many sacrifices so that we are what we are today also, I think motherhood doesn't come with a cooking ma with a manual. There's no owner's manual. You get this kid, you bring it home, and then you're like, okay, what am I supposed to do with it? So basically, the only roadmap that we have is the kind of mother we had, right? So if you had a terrible mom, we try not to be the terrible mom. If we had a great mom, we try to be better than her, like whatever it is. Uh, <clears throat> but every mom is trying to do the best that she can. Also, if you don't have a very cordial relationship with your mom, please forgive her for whatever she didn't know. If she knew any better, she would probably do better. So, you know, a lot of people in our society have problems with, you know, my mom did this, my mom did that. Let it go. It's really not worth it. And I'm also going to say one very important thing. Yeah. I'm going to tell you one very important thing. Also, one good thing I would say. Yeah. Yes. Mothers, mothers-in-laws, aunts, uh, masis, mommies, chachis. Because, you know, it's, it's never just one woman that inspires you the kind of energies that you grew up around whether it's your grandmother whether it's your neighbor's mom or whether it's your best friend's mom and you see little little things in little in different people and then you're like oh i like that when i have my kids i'm gonna do this and hopefully you'll remember that and so we're always a combination of all the mothers who inspired us so as we get older and as we become moms we also carry a huge responsibility yeah, to leave a good legacy uh, for the people who are looking to us to set free Good role uh, models for them, you know. Yeah, this, we are going through all that when in childhood we absorb everything. Yes, you absorb so everything, so you never know who's watching uh, you, thinking that you know I want to be a mom like Veena Auntie or. You become a mother. Yeah. Those things come in come in handy. Yes. Come right away. Yes. Automatically, you get that. Feeling. You already have that image of you know this is what I'm exactly. going to be. And so, one more thing that I have to tell to desi moms, please stop telling your kids what will people say. Like nobody gives a shit what people will say. <laughs> Thankfully, I never had a mom who said what will she know she would say what will people say when I would go to school and I would refuse to wear a sweater I would say oh, I only need the blazer. I don't want to wear the sweater She would say no you have to wear all the layers because otherwise people will say that we don't buy you enough warm clothes and I was like What 
And so that shit never made any sense to me. I was always rebellious yeah. of authority. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wear it because, but I've never, you are right. Right? I have never bothered about what people say. I didn't bother about it when I was four. I didn't bother about it when I was 40. And I'm sure as hell not bothered about it when I'm going to be 90. So please stop telling your kids, Log kya <laughs> What will people log say? Nahi, log ka hai kya na. Char log kya kahenge? I always tell them, so those things are okay. Those things, I kids don't believe in Nobody gives a shit. Like, no, I didn't even give a shit when I was in India. Because I, I grew up in India in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I didn't give a shit. Like, I'm like, okay. If they have something to say, it's their problem. If they're talking about me, that means they have so much time in their life that they're not doing something with their own. That's why they're talking about So if, if, if people are watching, then give them a good show. <laughs> Give them a good performance. Like, let it freaking be worth it. If they are saying, look, they can get look, then people are going to see people. Who are these people? Like, is there an email? Is there a phone number? Like, can I call this person? And you're like, really? Yeah. So, so people say, what will people say? I don't give a shit what people will say. I have love for everybody. If you don't, if you don't come with love, then do whatever you want to do. Be happy. Mother, mother, like mothers, I think the kids have to go on their own. Yes. On their own things. You cannot influence. Certain time age you cannot tell them what to do they have yeah. to make their own decisions and also grandkids i feel like when you have grandkids you kind of relive your life and your rules are different and i look at my mom and i'm like oh some rules are still the same like you know if it gets dark and my daughter's playing in the park then my mom expects her to come home it was the same thing like 50 years ago when we were kids it was the same nothing has changed right um and then some things are different like you know uh She's she's different for my uh, for my daughter. She's different for my nephew, and you know she's a little bit different. Like she's more chill. She's more relaxed. She's more participating in their jokes and stuff like that. When we were growing up, I think she was too stressed in trying to manage everything, right? So I'm just gonna sign off from my Queen's Curry Kitchen page, and then I'll come back to you for the conversation. But everybody that joined me today, mwah, thank you so much. Be blissful. Be flavorful. Have a great thank great so Mother's much, Day. Everyone. Check out my website, queenscurrykitchen.com. Download the free chana masala recipe and then enjoy it. Hope you have a great Mother's Day. I will be back with more live soon. Don't forget to tune in. Keep the notifications on so you'll know whenever I'm going live. Bye. Take care. Okay, so I'm just going to say one thing that please, everybody who came and whoever can, uh, had to cook this thing, go back and see it again one more time. It's good. Because you know what? Then you get, if you miss something, you, you, you'll hear it again. How do we explain everything to you guys? So I think, if not all, at least one thing you can try. If, if you want to try all, that's good too. But if you can, try one thing and see how it comes out. And Rupert is going to come and do something.